Jeff, welcome to the CIO Zone. Howdy. We're at Information on Demand 2010, which is a great number. And um, you're certainly uh, one of the, uh, I would call you the rock stars of the analytics world. <laughs> it's a pleasure having you with us today. Tell our audience, our members, a little bit about your role at IBM. So I'm the chief scientist for a group in IBM that specializes in analytics on entities. And an entity is a person or an organization. It could be a thing like a car or a boat. Uh, my job is to think of new stuff. Well, that sounds like it's a full-time job. <laughs> you could spend a lot of time doing that, and a yeah, great job, fun. too. Yeah. So uh, do you mind if I ask you a little bit about your history? Because I know some of it, and, and yeah. some of our, our audience may not. <clears throat> Uh, and I think it's appropriate as we sit here uh, right on top of the strip that uh, I ask you that question. Well, if you go back far enough, you know, I, I wrote a word processor in high school for the pet Commodore. <laughs> and my teacher sold it to the, he said, Could, do you mind if I sell this? And I'm like, sure. And that was sold, he sold it twice, once to the Los Angeles School District. So it was at that moment I went, wow, you can do something you love and people will send you money. This is crazy. That's a great point. Why should I go to school? So I quit going to school then. Um, I started a company called Systems Research and Development in 1984, and as I built that company up, I moved it to Vegas in, in um, maybe 1990. And then we started building systems for the casinos, and we built all kinds of systems for the casinos. We built systems for elsewhere around the country, different, uh, many different kinds of, uh, totally different kinds of systems. But two of the systems that were more interesting for the casinos, we built one for Griffin Investigations, and they were the Surveillance Intelligence Arm for Gaming. And, that system played a role in helping bring an end to the MIT card counting. Oh, that infamous uh, group yes. there. The book Bring Down the House, the movie yes. 21. The book was pretty accurate, I'm told, although I don't think there were beatings. And the movie I, I watched was really mainly it was, theater. It was Hollywoodized. Yeah, and the other system that I built for the gaming industry became known as NORA, or Non-Obvious Relationship Awareness. And its purpose was to take the 18 different lists of people that they were interested in, some bad people they're not supposed to do transactions with, and some people, problem gamblers, who are trying to self-exclude themselves. If you see me in your casino, kick me out. And the casino wants to make sense of all this data real fast. Yes. You know, you can lose a quarter of a million in 15 minutes here. So the idea of doing analytics end of, end of day right. isn't, isn't good. And so that system was, um, grew up and uh, eventually was the reason why IBM bought my company. I think it's a great starting point uh, when we're talking about analytics because obviously the incentives and the rewards are tremendous for an industry like the gambling or casino industry where they can affix uh, essentially the, the worth of uh, time in discovering this information. For a lot of people it isn't, it isn't like that. Yeah. I, uh, I was at uh, a, a conference a couple of weeks ago and uh, Tim O'Reilly uh, was talking about uh, the timeliness and the value of data, and he actually referred to you at one point, and he, he made the comment that, uh, how would you like to cross the street with information that's five minutes old? <laughs> that's on one of these Smarter Planet ads at IBM, you oh, may, exactly. if you're setting that's, me up. That's uh, perfect. Yeah, so um, um, the IBM, uh, uh, Ogilvy is a partner with IBM on our PR, and uh, they were interviewing a lot of us uh, propeller heads here at IBM, and, and they said, what are you working on? And I said, I, I'm really fascinated on helping organizations make sense of what they know as fast as they know it, so they can do something about it right. while it's happening. Right. And they went, that sounds great, but what would be an example? And I said, I said, well, imagine you're standing at the side of the road, and all you can see is the way the road looked five minutes ago. How would you know when to cross the road? And they went, bing! Everyone gets that. Yeah, everyone gets that. And it, it uh, yeah. Anyway, so it turned into an ad, a TV ad that's, you know, I, I've only seen it once by accident because I don't travel and I don't actually watch TV. But. Well, it's, it's a great uh, metaphor. Uh, and it, it, again, highlights the idea that there needs to be almost a, a, a tangible, to any level of observation, a tangible value to paying what it costs to get that information in a timely fashion. So one of the questions that, that strikes me is not all companies really comprehend and apparently, especially at the outset, 
of getting uh, starting to dance with analytics, what the payoffs might be and the kinds of things, of course, you don't know what you don't know. And they don't even, and of course, they can't know the value of what they don't know either. So it may be difficult for them to really embark on that journey. You know, one of the surprising things that I stumbled into here at IOD, and it's such a fun conference, I mean, there's 10,000 people who are buzzing about analytics, and analytics and data is like, my, it's my dreamy thing, it's like my hobby. So to be floating around here and talking to so many people and talking to customers and talking to technologists, a really funny thing that came out was this. They said, we had to do, uh, this one organization asked us to do a prototype to prove that it would be valuable. And if we proved it was so valuable, they didn't believe us. That's too good to be true, yeah. literally. Right. So we had to do a prototype again. We had to do five prototypes before they decided to actually buy it. And now, you know, it, it, uh, it's saving tens of millions a year. In the, uh, uh, the business world, we're used to filtering out the stories that are too good to be true uh, because they often turn out to be fool's gold. Uh, so you actually have something now like that and you're subject to the same uh, cynicism. So I heard somebody else today then say, well, we showed what, we did an ROI calculator. This is an earlier session today. And it was so good when we told the customer about it, they divided it by two <laughs> to sell it to the business. To, to otherwise no one would have believed them and they wouldn't have done it. They had to have credibility. Right. It's too so, good. Yeah. And then the guy came back and said, you know, I cut it in half to justify the project and we did the project, but it turned out we got the number you told us. And now I'm thinking, I'm remembering this bank we did some analysis for and we're like, you know, uh, this is going to save you 18 million a year. They never bought it. We always scratch our head and wonder why. What a great curse to have. If you have yeah, to have a problem, I think that's, I, I, I used to work with a fellow who would describe that as a high class problem to have. Yeah, well. <laughs> if you've got to have a problem. But, but it actually uh, talks about, uh, in a great, to a very great extent, the difficulty in getting someone to buy the whole nine yards before you get started. That in, it needs to be an iterative and an evolutionary uh, uh, dance, if you will. Because until you start opening the door, you just can't have a clue as to what's going to be on the other side. When I talk to customers sometimes, uh, particularly about our work, our, my work is how do you increase the quality of prediction? And the reason you want to increase prediction is you want to better recognize customers, you better want to recognize risk. But if you want to improve the quality of prediction, you have to commingle data from across the enterprise. You can't leave the yellow puzzle pieces over here and the blue puzzle pieces over there. You know, it's no different than if you take a puzzle piece out of the box and it has flames on it. You're kind of inclined to just yell fire, if that's all you have. But I did a blog post about this called Algorithms at Dead End. You can't squeeze knowledge out of a pixel. <laughs> because no matter how much compute... A line. These are a point compute. is not a line. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if you take the transaction or the puzzle piece with the fire on it, the yes. point, yes. and you put it in the puzzle, suddenly you can see all these lines. Exactly. And it's, now it's fire. It's fire, all right, but it's in a fireplace. That's context. Huh? It's better understanding something by looking at things around it. So what happens when you weave this data across, together from across the enterprise, it starts to create kind of clear pictures. Then your prediction's better. Right. But the challenge is if somebody says, well, let's do a prototype with just a fraction of this. And they say to you, let's use 3% of the blue puzzle pieces, 0.01% of the yellow puzzle pieces, and five red ones. Right. None of the puzzle pieces come together. You can't prove the value of something I would refer to as context accumulation. It's like, again, to use your analogy of picking 25 random pixels and trying to make a picture out of it. It's not going it to work. It doesn't work. It's not a, there's, there's no pattern that can be established. Right. Yes, yeah, so you have to actually, data, data has to come together for you to then get proper prediction. And the question is, how do you do it in real time? How do you do it at scale? How do you do it with sufficient accuracy? Right. How do you do it and protect the privacy and, and reduce the risk of unintended disclosure on the personally identifiable information? Right. Which leads us to the, some of the work that we're doing and about, about how, to anonymize, uh, how to anonymize data before you perform the analytics on it. Which is non-trivial. It's, um, well, I gotta tell you, I dreamt up how to do it in about 12 seconds. So for me, it seemed trivial. Executing it may take a bit longer. <laughs> it's that's open that way. That no, oh, really? It takes that's actually longer to explain it. That's great. You know, when somebody goes yeah. like, can yeah. you explain that? That actually takes the longest part. But it, the invention of it and how to deploy it is actually much quicker than just explaining 